Welcome to our hop breeding facility located at Bushy Park Estates, Tasmania. Today, we're gonna to meet Dr. Simon Whittock, head of our agronomic services and leader of our hop breeding program. We're gonna go behind the scenes and see what it takes to bring an experimental cultivar right through to commercialization. The beer industry's evolved in a big way, and so has our hop breeding program. It began way back in the 1950s, when our focus was on improving alpha acid yield. Then, the early craft beer movement rolled around in the 1980s, and beer drinkers began to move away from low aromas and bitterness toward more diverse flavours. So we changed tack to give the brewers what the people wanted, and began to breed uniquely Australian flavour hops. Since then, our hops have moved from a bittering commodity to heroes of the modern beer world. Of course, this is no happy accident, but the outcome of a rigorous hop breeding program that generates new cultivars of interest every year. And this is where the magic starts. G'day, Simon. So the genetic diversity represented on these benches could have implications for the industry for many years to come. Is it possible there are flavours here that are not currently available to brewers? That's certainly something we're working towards with these seedlings here. So the process starts in January. We come to our collection of international and Australian developed genotypes and we select the female plants that we want. We isolate the female flowers from the plants that we need before they're fertilised. And then once we've confirmed that the flowers that we've isolated are fertile, we add the pollen that we need. So how many of these crosses do you do a year? We deploy about 30 or 40 of these bags on each site each year. Uh, this is one that we've got here, it's worked really well. Those 30 to 40 crosses in every annual cycle result in between three and 4,000 seedlings deployed into the program every year. So we've targeted the male and the female and successfully cross them in the bag. Does that give you insight into what you expect to happen? That whole process feeds back. It gives us information about the agronomic performance and the expected flavour outcomes when you use a particular male or a particular female. So we know uh, the parent heritage. We've got a, a target in mind for agronomics and flavour indicators that we're looking for. Uh, what happens next? After harvest, we come through and we collect the mature hop cones and clean the seed from those. Uh, we then stratify the seed over winter before germinating it in the greenhouse in October. So we reduce the seedling population systematically over a number of years. What's the, what's the very first uh, stage of screening? So the very first stage of screening is on sex phenotype. We've collaborated with UTAS and Diversity Arrays Technology in Canberra to develop a molecular marker system that has the capability of differentiating female from male plants in the nursery. <laughs> What's the benefit of applying molecular marker technology? So being able to identify female plants early in the process, we're able to deploy a higher quality of material into our field trials. Unfortunately, it won't uh, decrease the amount of time it takes to produce a new cultivar in the breeding program, but it will increase the likelihood of a good outcome. The second phase of screening is looking at the plants very closely in the field and we want to see consistent high agronomic performance, a consistent picking window and good yield outcomes over a number of years. Does flavour come into selections at this point? So after six or seven years of field trials, we will select from among the elite plants some plants to go into internal brewing trials. And the success rate from three to 4,000 cultivars to commercialisation? Oh, it's much less than 1%. It's probably 1% at each step of the process. It seems as though there's quite a lot of decisions to be made on farm before a brewer gets to see an experimental variety. What's a, what's a typical timeline before uh, a, a sample will go to a brewery for a trial? We wouldn't let samples of an experimental genotype go out to a brewery inside six years. Sometimes it might be eight or ten years depending on the circumstances. And who do you target for trial work? The best brewing targets for our program at that early stage are breweries with small scale capability and a good sensory program. 
So trying to link what we observe from like the agronomic screening process to meaningful sensory data coming back in to complement our decision making. That's right, just like we need to see reproducible agronomic outcomes in our experimental trials, we need to see reproducible sensory outcomes in different contexts, in different beers. So can you give us an example of a, a recent successful commercialisation and the timeframes involved in that one? In 2020 we released Eclipse, which first appeared in our program as a seedling in 2004 and made its first appearance in a seasonal beer in 2012. And have you got a couple of examples of other highlights from the program? Um, Galaxy was bred in 1994 and was released on a commercial basis in 2009 and Enigma was bred in 2002 and released as a commercial prospect in 2015. It's a really fantastic result, isn't it, at quite a rate. The collaborative nature of the beer industry is extremely helpful when we're bringing a new hop to market. We're able to work closely with brewers during the trial phase to capture valuable sensory data. This ensures that we only progress hops that can achieve agronomic success and brewer acceptance. It's a long process from start to finish, but it's worth the wait.